In this morning's American Heartbeat, a story we couldn't be happier to tell you about. When former Detroit Lions linebacker Reggie Brown walks into a special lunch today given by his teammates, there probably, will probably be more than a few tears shed among his friends. Last December, Brown was nearly paralyzed by an on-field collision. And although the odds were against him, this remarkable man has made a miraculous recovery. Our Steve Avison reports. It is so much a part of our culture that we sometimes forget how violent the game of football can be. But just before Christmas last year, millions of viewers were given a shocking reminder on national television. Brown, second year backer of the Lions. At first, I didn't know, you know, how serious of an injury I had. But uh, as far as the accident, I remember pretty much everything until I went unconscious. And I remember saying, you know, you know, telling everybody I couldn't breathe. I remember, I, I remember the whole ordeal. I remember the whole day. What Reggie didn't know was just how close to death he had come. Injuries are a part of the sport, but in this final game of the regular season, fans and players alike watched in shock as doctors took 17 minutes to remove him from the field. Looking back at the replay of the game, I've seen it once. You know, I mean, the Lord of my life has stepped in and, you know, let me know that it wasn't my time to go yet. So, I mean, I'm just looking forward to, you know, seeing what else he has in store for my life. Prayer got an assist from medicine when doctors administered a powerful steroid to Reggie immediately after the injury. Hi, I'm Dr. Byron Hartunian. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I love football and I've been watching football all my life. After observing the tragic injury to Reggie Brown that you just witnessed on the Good Morning America segment, I realized that something better had to be done about protecting the neck of football players. With the help of my son and using his equipment from high school and use of modeling clay, we developed a model brace that would be effective in reducing the forces that can cause neck injury. Macho Products Inc., a company in Florida that is world famous for making martial arts equipment, developed prototypes that were then tested at Lexington High School. Such braces as the cowboy collar, the roll collar, the boards that stick up behind the player's head, they all serve the purpose of reducing certain forces but not the most serious forces that can cause neck injury. The Lex Brace addresses the problem of the more significant forces, particularly flexion and axial loading, that cause the most serious neck injury. The following short clip from the 1999 football season demonstrates an injury that occurred to Kelvin Moore when he was making a tackle. Cincinnati safety Kelvin Moore remains hospitalized after breaking a vertebrae in his neck Friday in a preseason matchup versus Detroit. The 24-year-old has regained some feeling in his arms and legs. During Super Bowl 34 between the Titans and the Rams, we were all reminded of the serious neck injury that can occur as evidenced by Blaine Bishop in the following sequence. Doing Rams possession, Warner, the tight end, Ernie Conwell. First down in a major collision, it's Bishop, the heart and soul. This Titans defense down and hurt. Take a second look. Bishop seems to get the worst of this collision. Jeff Fisher and the Titans gathering together. The Rams also quite concerned. Bishop left by a stretcher after several minutes of being down, Bishop alert, diagnosed with a strained neck. A basic principle of science is that energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be diverted or absorbed. The energy of motion, called kinetic energy, increases directly with the mass of an object and increases even more with the speed of that object. Thus, as players get bigger and faster, more energy gets transmitted and absorbed during hits, falls, or crashes. The risk of neck injury in sports requiring helmets is therefore increasing, and an effective protective device, the Lex Brace, is more necessary than ever. The Lex Brace was developed to specifically address 
this serious problem. The letters of Lex Brace stand for Low Energy Exchange Brace. In other words, with the use of the brace, which depends on the firm edge of the helmet butting up against the inner side of the brace, the energy of a hit is transferred from the helmet to the brace and to the shoulders and therefore bypasses the neck. Lower energy is exchanged through the neck. The following color pictures represent application demonstration of the Lex Brace in various positions of the head and various positions of the football player. United States patent has been received both design and utility for the Lex Brace. Here are some schematic pictures of the Lex Brace as seen from the U.S. patent application. The Lex Brace is unique in that as opposed to other braces it does not firmly attach to the shoulder pads. It is an independent structure on itself. The player will apply the Lex Brace after putting on the helmet between the helmet and the shoulder pads. In other words, it can be used only during play, but when the player is on the sidelines, he can remove it. It is important that the Lex Brace be sized based on a player's neck height. Therefore, different height Lex Braces are available it is necessary to fit the Lex Brace so the edge of the helmet below the ear is just touching or about one-eighth of an inch above the surface of the uncompressed brace when the player is standing. In this way, in the uncompressed state, it will allow good rotation, flexion, extension, and motion of the head, but when tackled or in a compressed situation, will lock the helmet to the shoulder pads and prevent injury to the neck by allowing the energy to be absorbed in the brace. The Lex Brace has been used during the 1998 and 1999 football seasons at Lexington High School in Lexington, Massachusetts. The following video clips demonstrate actual field use of a Lex Brace. The particular one you will observe is on number 62. It is a white brace it is worn by Joe DiMatteo. He plays center as well as left tackle. In the initial video, Joe is playing center and it demonstrates the mobility of his neck in the position when he has to snap the ball. You're one slip away from a big play in this game. A missed tackle, a misstep, and someone could go the whole route. It doesn't, it doesn't take much at all. Uh, Highlights of the first half, uh, Briggs, uh, 14 carries for 82 yards for the Rockets. Michael Boyd uh, throwing the ball, uh, three completions and six attempts for 57 yards and a touchdown. The Minutemen go right up the middle on the first down. You will observe that during play, the brace stays in position, supported by the helmet, and only during compression or during the tackling modes, does it block the transfer of energy through the neck? Into the secondary, did a nice job that time. Adam Briggs, the ball carrier. Picked up 11, give him 93 yards on the afternoon. Here he is again. Not much there this time. Santo had him up top, and it looked like number six. This play demonstrates a situation where there's, there is a direct blow to the top of the helmet with an axial loading force. That, yeah, that's right. Well, yes. I know, you know, it's difficult to have water all over your paperwork. <laughs> well, the fans don't really care, Cliff, because no, they have water right. all over them. Yeah, that's right. And here's Briggs over the left side with a huge hole. Taken down by Brendan Sullivan, but not until Briggs has and, the... Uh, Sean Harris, perhaps to a lesser degree. Take a look here as, uh, again, Briggs just explodes at the point where the linebackers would be. Once you let a guy get to that point unmolested, the next play demonstrates a situation where Joe makes a tackle and is involved in a pileup with other players falling on his head. 
the fullback. I don't know if Nick ran for 100 yards in his high school career or not. I fullback. don't know if, if Nick Aiello ever reached the 100-yard mark, but uh, we'll have to uh, check the record books. Oliver on the sweep. Cuts inside and will be taken down close to the 40, excuse me, the 35-yard line. It'll be fourth down. The Rockets will be short by about three yards. Well, the selects what they're trying to decide. Let's take a look at the last play here. You can see uh, Oliver, number, Oliver, number two, a couple of blockers out there in front of him, but uh, once he gets to the line of scrimmage, the play breaks down pretty quickly. Pretty good pursuit that time by the, uh, by the Lexington. In this final play, Joe makes a clean tackle at the line of scrimmage with lateral forces being applied to his head by the running back. It's a day for the big uglies, Cliff. Yes, it they is. like this kind of weather. First and ten rockets. Briggs, not this time. DiMatteo, Joe DiMatteo, 62, up to make the play, a 5'11", 190-pound senior. No gain on the last play. Second and 10. We're inside of a minute to play in this third quarter. The official's doing a very good job, uh, Michael, of uh, exchanging footballs after every play, trying to keep the ball as dry as possible. Take a look at this replay now. You can see he is met in the backfield. In the backfield, Gary Ward on his blocker, and the blocker was just able to uh, shoot a gap and uh, came up through the uh, gut and uh, made the tackle. At the end of the 1998 football season, Joe was asked to give his thoughts about the use of the Lex Brace. He wrote the following words. With my experience with the Lex Brace, I found that it has helped as much or more than the cowboy collar and neck roll. I like it because it gives more support than a cowboy collar, but more flexibility than a neck roll. In many situations when making a tackle, I found the brace takes most of the pressure off the impact that my head takes. It also makes me more conscious of how far back my head is when making a hit. I guess it has improved my technique to a point also. Cervical spine injuries in hockey players are actually more common than in football players. Travis Roy, the Boston University hockey player who became a quadriplegic after hitting the boards and fracturing or breaking his neck, is a recent example of the tragic consequences of neck injury in hockey. It is my belief that with proper modification of a hockey helmet so that it would be more like a football helmet with a rigid piece coming below the ear and better ear protection. The Lex Brace would be beneficial at minimizing cervical spine injuries in hockey as well. In fact, a recent publication put out by the Massachusetts Medical Society teaches hockey players to keep their heads up. Part of the publication points out that there is no protective equipment presently available to prevent injury to the cervical spine. I believe the Lex Brace can fill that position. It turns out that a better protective helmet is manufactured by CCM, the hockey company, in Quebec, Canada. As shown here, it has a rigid earpiece which will allow it to work properly with the Lex Brace to reduce forces going through the neck. Modification of this helmet by incorporating a slightly lower and rounded bottom edge, more like a football helmet, would allow it to work even better with the Lex Brace. I have been told by knowledgeable hockey experts that the main reason this helmet is not worn more often is because of appearance and style. There is a major problem resulting in greater neck injury when appearance and style are allowed to take precedence over safety in high-speed collision sports that require helmets for head protection. Another real danger in hockey is the injury that can occur to the side of the neck and throat from either a direct hit of a high-speed puck or the razor-sharp edge of a skate blade. An example of such a tragic injury occurred to Trent McCleary of the Montreal Canadiens recently when he was hit in the throat by a slap shot which fractured his larynx. Although he skated off the ice, emergency surgery was necessary to provide an airway and keep him alive. 
While Trent McCleary remains in critical but stable condition, his situation is no longer life-threatening. The Canadiens forward was struck in the throat with a puck last night against the Flyers. He suffered a fractured larynx and collapsed lung. The Lex brace, by providing 360 degrees of protection around the neck, would minimize such injuries. Neck injury and concussions are not limited to hockey and football players. Any high-speed sport where helmets are worn would benefit from the use of the Lex brace, which would allow transfer of energy to the shoulders rather than the neck. In December 1999, the U.S. Product Safety Commission issued an advisory for skiers and snowboarders to wear helmets to prevent head injuries. They found that there were 16,000 head injuries reported in 1998, and they believe that by use of helmets, 7,000 head injuries could be reduced. The fact remains that the use of a helmet on the head only increases the forces that would go through the neck compared to the unhelmeted head. Therefore, there is a need for a protective device such as the Lex Brace to allow transfer of energy to the shoulders and bypass the neck. Simpson, the major manufacturer of NASCAR racing equipment, does sell a removable collar to be worn under a racing helmet to reduce neck injury. It is shown here in red with its flat surface next to the Lex Brace, which has an angled inner surface. Only the Lex Brace will capture the helmet, preventing it from sliding off the edge. This situation can occur with braces which have flat or rounded surfaces leading to neck injury. Here are some additional views of a racing style helmet, comparing the use of the Lex Brace to that of the Simpson neck brace. Concussions are another serious problem in contact sports, such as hockey and football. There are two types of injury that can cause concussion. The first is an impact blow to the head. The second is impulsive loading or whiplash injury to the head. The more common form of concussion is the whiplash form. This kind of injury can be minimized by use of the Lex Brace. Concern for liability issues should not hinder development of a device that can minimize severe neck injury. The answer is to do appropriate biomechanical testing to demonstrate the effectiveness of such a device. The Lex Brace has been initially tested at Wayne State University Biomechanical Laboratory in Detroit, Michigan. Initial results are promising. Closing observations explain that Cervical devices have an effect on both the loads seen in the neck region as well as the harshness of the impact as measured by the severity index, or SI, for abbreviation. The only cervical device that lowered the SI in the frontal impact was the Lex Brace. The Lex Brace also reduced the SI value in the axial loading case. The report goes on to recommend further research in this area. There is no brace that can guarantee 100% safety. But it is my firm belief and commitment that the Lex Brace is such a device that can minimize the problem. Thank you for your time.